live ah, we are live so well good morning good morning and welcome to intercultural spark so intercultural spark is about the spark inside each of us that drives us to spark change in the world through business and life projects I am your host, Deanna Shas. I'm the founder of Intercultural Talk, which is a digital intercultural and real life marketing agency. Today, we are excited to have on the show, Amy Wu. She is an award-winning journalist and documentary filmmaker and the founder and creator of From Farms to Incubators, which tells the stories of women entrepreneurs in ag tech. So, and really exciting, we're also joined by students from the Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences. So we have a really exciting show today. Welcome to Intercultural Spark. Hi, good morning, good morning. How's everybody? Great, thank you. Welcome. You guys can all, uh, you're welcome to unmute as well. So, um, well, we're excited to have everyone here and we're gonna get a chance to catch up with Amy and then each of our students also has a chance to ask um, questions. But what I wanted to start with is a little known genre of fitness called interpretive aerobics, uh, which is <laughs> fitness exercises that tell a deeper story. So. Um, what I always like to do is to it's to start the show with the exercise of the day, uh, which is, ready? Flash exercise. So our exercise of the day each day um, tells a little bit of tight the meaning of what our show is going to be about. So if you're able to, you can do this exercise from your, from seated, but if you can, please join me and let's stand up for our exercise. So this is a combined, it's a, um, it's a kickback. So it's a combined upper back move with a, uh, with a kickback. So if you can't join me um, or do it from your chair. So starting from the stand, um, if your hands are on your thighs, you're going to lean forward until your um, hands touch your knees, pull your elbows up. That's the row and then kick back. I'm going to show me full for one second. We have so many people today. So I'm going to show our exercise, then we'll do it together. Okay. So, so basically you lean forward, lift your elbows, press back, bring it in and down. So it's, it's pull, press, release, and lower. Pull, press, release, and lower. And the reason that I chose that exercise is because I'm thinking of farming and I'm like, oh, look, we're going to pull weeds. We're going to pull weeds. But then it was like, press, release, press, release. No. Agriculture is no longer about being out in the field pulling weeds, right? So there's your pull, press, release exercise. Um, all right. Well, I hope everyone had as much fun as I did doing that and actually overthinking <laughs> Because I was like pulling weeds. They're going to be like, no way. All right, friends, we are going to uh, go ahead and catch up with Amy first. So I'm going to have everyone go backstage and we're excited to have you come back and ask questions. So don't go anywhere. But I wanted to have a minute to talk to Amy first. <laughs> so um Thank you so much for being here. So you're like, you've like won all these, you're like the 50 women that are changing the world. You're changing the world of food. I mean, just phenomenal stuff. Um, so, but really like with my exercise of pulling weeds, I was reading your book, Farms to Incubators, which just came out this month, but they're talking about like AI and mobile apps and all kinds of stuff. Can you at least give our viewers a sense of like what we're even talking about with what's going on in, in ag tech and agriculture technology now? Well, first of all, Deanna, thank you so much for having me on Intercultural Spark. I'm really um, super excited. I'm excited too that we'll be joined by students from Chicago <laughs> High School of Ag, ag Science. It's so cool. Um, so ag tech is a uh, combination of agriculture and innovation. But you mentioned like, for example, like like artificial intelligence and, and all these wow. really cool things. So these are women like in the book, I profile almost 30 women who are creating 
the innovation to help farmers, basically. Mm -hmm. So farmers are having a lot of challenges, including uh, a lot of it comes from climate change, you know? I mean, so we have, you know, lack of a uh, labor force now, water and land management issues, particularly out in, um, you know, California, where I started my research. So um, at the same time, farmers have a, a great deal of pressure to produce uh, food for what's gonna be like 10 billion people by 2050, an extraordinary number of people who need to be fed in this world. So um, yeah, I chose to focus on the women creating this and a lot of them women um, women of color as, as well. So artificial intelligence, blockchain, robotics, mm -hmm. um, automation, and then uh, sensors in the field, drones, pretty cool stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't well, get on it myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's interesting when I started reading more about some of the work, just even with like I don't know, like you know, driverless tractors and mm -hmm. the things that people were doing to to be able to anticipate and test the soil, that there's still an issue of actually even women in tech. I think that women are under rest, uh, underrepresented. So now you've got both tech combined with farming. Uh, it's pretty amazing. And you use the phrase, you know. The question when you were talking to women, you would say, well, why would you climb this Everest? Why was it, what was the analogy for you that, that was like climbing an Everest as far as being a woman, women in technology, in ag tech? Well, I, I use the word Everest because, um, I mean, as you noted, um, Deanna, there's, there's not a lot of women still at key, key decision making levels in when it comes to tech. Um, and, and includes venture capital and on mm -hmm. also on the agriculture side. Traditionally, farms are run by, by men and passed down from generation to generation. So I thought it was really amazing that there was this pocket. And when I say pocket, five or six years ago, it was like a handful of women that I found who were um, entering the ag and tech field through this window, this new opportunity of mm -hmm. creating technology for farmers. So um, I think it's pretty cool. And a lot of these these women, um, I found out that they have a background in STEM, pretty strong backgrounds in um, science, technology, um, engineering, and math. And they all mm -hmm. want to solve big impact problems. So there's um, they have a diversity of stories. I mean, when I say Everest, I also focused on their personal stories too. Mm -hmm. I mean, one woman like drove from across the country, I think from Manhattan, New York City to California to follow her dream of launching an ag tech company and brought her whole, com her whole, I was going to say company, but brought her whole family with her. So that, wow. that's an example of like being driven by a passion for something they truly believe that they can, they can, uh, they can solve, they can help mm -hmm. What was interesting about that too, though, is the idea of, you know, traditionally you think of women as nurturers and in some cases it was the idea, uh, the woman with the, the red melon who was right. trying to really develop that, that really was about trying to nurturing and to make sure that there was food for the people from where she came from. Yeah. So interesting that you brought up uh, Lei Wong from mm -hmm. uh, the Red Melon Company. I mean, she's, to she's definitely an example where um, she she saw that the red melon could contribute to um, health and wellness and sort of food as health and wellness. And she created this technology to extract the oil from the red melon, this, this amazing looking fruit that's like, I don't even know how to describe it, but in the, I mean, it's just like a red bowling ball with lots mm -hmm. of <laughs> actually, I hate to say it, when it was cut open and peeled, it actually looked like a brain, I thought. It was yeah, it really a crazy brain, actually, That's a really good analogy. <laughs> yes, it looked like a brain, but it has, it's really high in beta carotene, like it's got like 800 times that as of a carrot. But she developed this way to extract the oil, so, and she's trying to bring it out to the, to the mass market, and originally it was to help her um, her home country. She's from Vietnam and there's a real mm -hmm. issue of malnutrition um, and, you know, in, in her home country where she's from, actually, especially with youth and, and children and so forth. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So Noelle says hello from Chicago Ag. We're so excited for the conversation today. And so just for the context for that, so the Chicago um, High School for Agricultural Scientists or <laughs> Agricultural Sciences, uh, they provide opportunities for diverse students from across the city of Chicago to study agriculture. So this high school, this is a Chicago public high school that sits on 72 acres in Chicago's South Side, and it has a fully operating farm and is home to a variety of livestock. 
which is wild. So we have so much to talk about and the students had a chance. So this whole thing started in 2016. Amy, you got a grant. Did you know anything about ag sciences or farming before you got the grant to write about it? Oh, that's, that's a really good question. Uh, the answer is uh, no. I am a consumer. I'm a voracious shopper and consumer, though. Wow. <laughs> kinds of food. And um, I grew up in the suburbs and very close to New York City. Mm -hmm. And I had no, I did not uh, actually walk on any farms and, you know, prior to being sent to Salinas Valley. So I don't have a background in agriculture, but it was um, when I was sent there in 2016, I was fascinated with what I saw because for the first time in my life, I saw where the vegetable that I ate came from. Like I would turn yeah. over the vegetable and go, oh, it's Salinas, California. I still do that today, actually. I oh. turn over vegetables to see where they're from. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So um, I guess part of this is also that, yes, it started in 2016, but um, the one of the, the passions that I have and messages I want to send out with this project is you don't need to have a background necessarily uh, in farming to be able to get into agriculture and ag tech. Um, you come from no background, but have a real passion and interest in it, which is where I came from with this mm. project. So, well, and you've actually, what's fascinating is not only did you not have a background in it then, but I feel like now there was a line where you went from a journalist covering it so you're now driving change through your platform with the farms to incubators, the documentary, the book, like, like there was a change where now you're actually a leader driving this, this field and particularly women in ag tech. Oh. Yeah, that's very true. And that was totally, um, really unplanned. I mean, like I saw, said, I saw a lack of women leaders and entrepreneurs, certainly in this area of, of agriculture and ag tech, where I was sitting from, which Salinas Valley is a good, a good place to look at because it is the vegetable or the salad bowl of the world. It produces 80 percent. And, and also in the Midwest, I mean, agriculture is huge everywhere in the U.S., mm. but um, where, I'm, where it gets to is that I was telling the stories, I thought this is an untold story. There were not a lot of stories of uh, women entrepreneurs in this area. So I started to unearth the stories. But um, as the years kind of went on, there were more and more women who, you know, who would call me up or who would, people would say, did you see this technology? Did you know this woman started this? So I, um, I saw that there was a real power to storytelling. Number one, this mm -hmm. gets uh, the story out there. But also it's a bit of outreach and, in, and ultimately advocacy in the sense that mm -hmm. I want to see more women. Mm -hmm. I want to see more women in the space. Women play a huge role in, in food in general. A lot of us are the decision makers of, and the shoppers in the family. <laughs> making sure. Decisions, um, at the supermarket or what's, what we're going to eat for dinner. So uh, it shifted from being a pure uh, journalist and storyteller to somebody who really wanted to just get the stories out to see more women in the space as well. And that's mm -hmm. kind of where I'm headed with, with, this, um, with this project that's grown legs, that's grown mm -hmm. legs of own. <laughs> Sure. And one other thing, and I keep saying this and then, but I want to bring on Kennedy and Elizabeth, our first two students coming on. But I think there's so much learning with what you've done, Amy. I'd love this idea. This is kind of where Intercultural Spark came from. It's the idea that you can create something from nothing and that anybody, you don't have to be like rich and famous, um, although, you know, that's fine too. But, you know, it's the idea that anyone can create something. And even in Salinas, they got together, I guess, uh, what was it? Citibank left. So there were like 900 people lost jobs. But even the city planners went to Forbes and said, let's do an ag tech conference. And that's a big deal. So now yeah. there's an annual Forbes ag tech yeah, conference. They created this, this whole new market to, to help support the city. Yeah. And that's a really important theme here is that, you know, to, to look at potential opportunities, you know, in other words, like we all eat and, you know, so we're all familiar with food in that sense, but the city, you know, had to reinvent itself. Mm -hmm. And say what is what is a uh, to have the foresight and maybe a bit of a crystal ball to say that we need a new kind of workforce here mm -hmm. and yeah. so we need younger people. Mm -hmm. uh, we need younger people with different kinds of skills. So absolutely, there's a common theme that mm -hmm. looks at opportunities among the challenges. Yeah. And speaking of younger people. <laughs> with different kinds of skills. I always like to, I always hate to put, I always want to put myself like in the bottom. I want to make sure people are <laughs> here. We're going to, 
Amy and I are going to come down here because we want to support the uh, the generation of the of the the future. So we have, and you guys can both unmute yourselves. So Kennedy, Kennedy is a senior at Chicago Egg High, uh, High School, and Kennedy says, "I am cut from a different cloth." Go Kennedy, and Elizabeth. Wow, Elizabeth is a senior in the biotechnology and agriculture today pathway, who will be attending the University of Michigan to major in biology. So that will be in the fall. So welcome, Kennedy and Elizabeth. By the way, if you're watching live, a little bit different than usual. If you have questions, drop them in. We're gonna let the students go first. So I don't know if we'll get to them, but do say hi because we don't know we don't know you're here unless you say hello to us. So please drop that in the chat. And Kenny and Elizabeth, I understand you have questions prepared for Amy after you watched her documentary. Yes, um, hello, it's finally nice to meet you. I really enjoyed your documentary. My question for you is what advice would you give to a minority such as a Hispanic woman like me who is interested in pursuing any STEM related field? Oh, that's a great question, Elizabeth. First of all, congratulations too on your, your path and, and to starting a new chapter at the university. That's awesome. Um, so I would say that there, um, there's a lot of opportunities for, uh, for, for young women and youth who are interested in um, the ag area and also come from a strong background in STEM. Um, I think, first of all, like the, the high school that you go to is, is awesome because it gives you already a good background in that. But also, there's a lot of opportunities, I think, to, um, to join organizations, maybe like when you're in the University of Michigan. I think that there's a growing um, focus on creating programs and workshops and events related to STEM, especially with women in STEM. Um, the industries like agriculture really seek out uh, the next generation of, of youth who can provide those skills. It's a really competitive workforce and they're competing, the, the food and farming industry is competing with a lot of other industries <laughs> for talent when it comes to that area. So I don't think you're gonna find a shortage of, of folks, especially um, you know people already in the workforce and professionals who want to mentor. Um, mm -hmm. The women that I wrote about in the book, they're hungry to actually connect with younger women and mentor them. They're like, if you know of a young woman who's interested in this area, please have them call me. So I think a lot of it is networking and being connected. And it could be with your um, the pro a professor or a teacher, too. Um, mm -hmm. Wait, or here's a hint. Now you know Amy Wu, who knows every woman in ag tech. <laughs> well, that is, that is a hint and now it's out there. Um, is that part of the reason why I wanted to include mm -hmm. so many women and profile them in this book is, and I wanted to use the port the profile format, is because I wanted to make it really accessible and digestible where somebody who is maybe not in ag tech could pick up the book and literally it's organized where you can go from profile to profile. Mm -hmm. I don't want to call it a Rolodex, but you could easily connect with each of the women um, through there. And like I said, almost all of them are really hungry to find ways to either speak at a high school, at a college, um, have a young person who want they can mentor as well. So great mm -hmm. question. Yeah. And actually, that's true. Just to say, just as people get as um, as people get older, we, we feel like we want to make sure like that we have something to offer. And so that's true for for all young people just to call people. If you've ever done an informational interview where it's not interviewing for a job, but you you basically interview someone to find out what their job is like. And most people will if you just ask, you know, most people are willing to do that. And it's a great way to find out more about an industry or specific jobs. So, Kenny, do you have a question for us too? Mm -hmm. I do. Well, first of all, I'm so happy to be here and amongst some very powerful women. Um, and my question for you is, can you tell us about an experience where you were doubted for your abilities because you were a woman of color? Mm. How did you shock the person slash people that doubted you? Mm. I love that question. And I think it gets to the heart of project, actually. Um, in 2016, um, I answered a call out for the International Center for Journalists had a grant where they were looking for stories for minority women business owners. Um, and I and I looked around, like I said earlier, and I didn't see a lot of women at all in agriculture. So I started to ask around how many minority women entrepreneurs are there in ag tech. Um, I didn't get 
many uh, much response actually. In fact, I think I got a lot of people who were quiet <laughs> after I asked that, and I kept asking that. And I thought one of the challenges in initially getting the story is that um, I am not from agriculture, and I am not from um, an ag-centric area region. So you know, it took a lot of persistence, I think, from my own end to prove to people that I am really mm. passionate about this issue. I'm not from this area. I don't come from a farming background. I don't look like your traditional, um, you know, woman in the fields. Um, but I, I'm really, I really want to tell the story. So I stuck with it and I kept asking the question and I just kept going to meetings and kept showing up and sort of one, you know, one story led to another. So, um, I would say that my own challenge was just to prove um, in the beginning that I am in this for the long run. I'm here because I really care about this issue. And I think that ultimately that really shows and it doesn't matter what your gender is, I feel, or what you necessarily look like. I feel like people get it when somebody's really passionate about something and they stick with something. So I hope that answers a bit of your question. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, thank you, Elizabeth and Kennedy. We're going to go ahead and say goodbye to the two thank of you. you. Um, you know, and I do love, I just want to emphasize that idea, Amy, of what you just said about showing up. There is something to be said for showing up consistently. How many people like actually just don't take advantage of opportunities that are there? You know, showing oh, up yeah. is, yeah, showing up is a big part of it. Absolutely. All right. So now we're going to bring on Tabitha. And let's bring on Tabitha and Kelsey. All right. Where's my friend Kelsey? All right. Tabitha and Kelsey. All right. So Tabitha is a junior in the biotechnology pathway with hopes on going into medical, into the medical research community. And Kelsey is a senior in the biotechnology and agricultural pa pathway, and she's going to be attending ooh, the University of Southern California, majoring in biology and pre-medicine. And actually, just one thing is I'm mentioning like what pathway the, each of the students who are joining us. I think what do you, there's four pathways at the school. Kelsey or Tabitha, what are the four pathways that people can do there's, at the school? There's six. Oh, there's six. Okay. And they're all just yeah. related to different aspects of, of agriculture. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're basically like our electives. Okay. Okay. Other than then you you have your your Chicago because Chicago Public Schools just so people who are watching know you know there's all the criteria that you have for basically for basic high school graduation mm -hmm. but then there's this added layer of of uh, the agricultural sciences. So, all right, Tabitha and Kelsey, who's going first? Who's got a question? I have a question. Um, so, how do you react to someone? who does not believe that there is workplace inequality? How do I react to someone who doesn't believe in workplace um, equality, right? Yes. Um, well, I think uh, it's to continue to do the good work that we do. In other words, like for example, I have come across folks who don't believe in it, whether or not they say it out loud <laughs> is one thing, but you kind of know where they stand with certain things. Um, and I think it's to, for example, in the area of of, um, of ag tech and women creating the innovations for um, this male dominated sector, there are certainly still uh, segments of folks who, who, who just, you know, they kind of are cynical about it or they're just used to the old way of doing things. I think it's to prove um, to prove things through your your own hard work and innovation and your passion, it's to continue on the path of doing um, doing what you believe in, and to prove I mean to prove to yourself mostly and that you have something to contribute to this field, no matter what background you come from. Like I said, no matter what what gender, what kind of family you come from, um, whether or not you come from this background, it's hard to change other people's perspectives of maybe what they already grew up believing or their own history. But I, I believe in walking your own path and walking the line and being clear about where you stand with things. So in, in my own case, it was that I truly believe that these stories needed to be told. I decided to focus on women and women of color, especially in the beginning. 
So I felt strongly about that, no matter what folks would tell me, like I had, even with this recent book, I had people in the very beginning, maybe in 2018, when I first wanted to write this, I had people say that I don't think anybody's going to be interested in a book about women in ag tech. Like who's going to pick up this book? Um, I had one one of my mentors even who um, I think they were trying to be nice about this, but they said, do you really want to spend all your time and your weekends <laughs> writing such a kind of book that nobody's really going to pick up, you think? And I was just like, I think I'm going to prove you wrong because I, like, I, had <laughs> <laughs> I just had an intuition that even if you're not interested in ag tech or going into it, I think everybody's inspired by like, by um, women leaders and entrepreneurs and just people who are doing really good stuff. So I myself had this feeling that um, they're not, they're wrong. <laughs> Although I didn't tell them they're wrong. And I just decided I'm going to go forward anyway. Yeah. yeah. That's wonderful. And Tabitha, you have a question as well. Yes, I do. Miss Wu, it is so great to finally meet you. My question to you is, when faced with misogyny in the workplace, how can young women reaffirm that they belong there, and especially in agriculture? Yeah, it is a real challenge in uh, sectors where it's male-dominated, like agriculture, and especially in agriculture where there's a, a good portion of the work is being done in the fields where a lot of the production team is still is still a lot of men for you know many different reasons um i would say uh first of all like to uh to know your rights you know i mean these days with a lot of the agribusinesses and also farms including small farms there's a real focus on um training whether it be for sexual harassment or knowing your rights i think is really important and secondly going into the um your work um focused on focused on the work. I mean, so in other words, like it could be hard though. I, like I said earlier, there are folks who have certain beliefs <laughs> already based off of maybe what they grew up with and so forth. And it's gonna be almost impossible to change those beliefs, but if the line is crossed, know that you you should speak up and, and you know, especially with the growing importance of when it farms and organizations on um, areas such as sexual harassment and assault and so forth. Um, but also not to, to go into a new workplace knowing that you have a lot to offer, you have the skills, you have the talent, um, regardless of gender. Like, you know, you come from this amazing um, high school and, you know, you guys are studying things that I, I, I don't, I can't say I can begin to understand. So knowing that they're lucky to have you and to go in there with your kind of like your head up high and your shoulders back. And I think slowly over time, like I was saying earlier, people know uh, your work will speak for itself and so will your passion. And don't be afraid to actually speak up as well. I've, I've certainly faced um, that in the beginning, as I said, when I was a journalist without any background in agriculture, with any history of agriculture, I've had... Um, Folks who uh, were probably a bit um, cynical as to whether, like, why is this person here? Can they actually do anything? <laughs> um, but I think you prove people wrong through your own um, work and actions. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, thank you to Tabitha and Kelsey. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I would add to that as well is that just because somebody says something doesn't make it true. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. It doesn't make know. it it's not true most of the time um and it comes from their own fears or other things too so right yeah. right yeah. and actually just on the point of you know you were talking about people saying well oh will your book make a difference i think it's important to know and i am going to look at my note to say this that do you think it'll make a difference so amy was named by worth magazine as the groundbreakers 2020 list of 50 women changing the world in 2021 she was um food tank named her as one of 27 women reshaping the food system. So, you know, there's, that's a big stuff. and some big recognition for how you're making change in the world. So very exciting. All right. We are going to now welcome Liam and Kyla. So let's see, we've got Liam and doo -doo, Kyla. All right, Liam and Kyla, welcome. So Liam is a sophomore and he wants to be more involved in the field of agriculture. He's currently serving as historian of our sophomore FFA. What's FFA? Oh, uh, Future Farmers of America. 
of Future Farmers of America officer team and was in this year's academic decathlon team. Go Liam. And then Kylam is an outgoing, playful and energetic freshman uh, to be around who pursues a dream in entrepreneurship. So welcome Kyla and Liam. So tell us your questions. Uh, first off, uh, thank you for the opportunity. It's great to be here and I love what you're doing. My question is, what do you believe is the best first step to take towards achieving a more diverse workplace uh, in the field of agriculture? And what are some of the ways to achieve that first step? Really good question, uh, Liam. And that's great that you're, you're so involved with the FFA. I love that organization. I think they do so much. Um, so um, the question again is what is needed to bring more diversity, right? To the ag, the ag workforce. Um, I think it starts with the, in the ground up and then it also starts from the top up. <laughs> so in terms of um, agribusinesses, um, I'll give an example. There are really not a lot of female um, uh, CEOs and C-level uh, folks at, at the big agribusinesses. I can think of maybe Beth Ford at Lando Lakes. <laughs> I can't think of a lot of others, actually. So I think it's having more um, looking at, for example, the board. It could be the board of directors if it's a public company mm, and maybe sure. some private companies have their own strategic advisors and some of them have a board as well and i think it's looking at the mix of folks to, and thinking strategically about who is sitting there because at that at the level of uh whether it be government or large organizations or even big farms it starts with the decision makers so um we we need more um I would, I'll just put it out there. We need more women and people from different backgrounds. And why do we need more people of different backgrounds? Um, I think a diversity of perspectives and especially fresh perspectives. I mean, that includes having more young people <laughs> as well um, can only make a, uh, a company uh, more successful. You know, if they are creating a product, um, if they are growing something, it only means that that end result is, is a better quote unquote product. So I strongly believe in that. And also visibility. I think having people from different, um, all different backgrounds, and that could be gender, it could be people who are traditionally not in agriculture, um, having them speak or having them, you know, as the keynote speakers or run conferences in the industry are also really important. Um, and that could be for the FFA as well. I think having a more, uh, you know, more diverse group of folks. So I think it starts there. Um, and also mentorship. I think it starts from the uh, younger than high school, you know, kindergarten to sixth grade, um, having a bit of um, having some women, maybe women leaders in farming or women leaders in agriculture come speak to elementary schools and junior high schools um, to allow kids to see that, oh, Here's a woman that is not my traditional idea of a farmer, <laughs> but she's in this industry. I mean, I remember my own career day in eighth grade, you know, where we had parents from all different um, backgrounds, you know, speak about their jobs. And it was it was really amazing, like hearing from their perspective. And then I said, oh, I might be an astronaut or I might be a gymnast or, you know, you get an idea about what people do based off of what you see. But thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. And I just realized, I think Talia was going to be your partner. Kyla, do you want to, how about if we go ahead and I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring Talia in and then Kyla, I'll bring you back with Romarion for, uh, for our last one. So I've got Talia yeah. coming in and uh, that's so funny. I think that this should be, there we go. All right. There we go. All right. Hi, Talia. Sorry about that. Welcome. So Talia is a sophomore at the Chicago Agricultural High School. So welcome. And I know, understand you have a question for Amy as well. Actually, one thing while Talia is pulling off her, uh, can you find it? It should be in the it's kind of sort of to the bottom and to the left to take off the mute button. But Liam, one thing just along the lines of what you were talking about with all the things that you're involved in in school, I do think that any opportunity you have to to create a leadership position, like to to take leadership even as volunteer when you're in high school, when you're in college is so important. Uh, one, because of the context you make, but also just because of um uh, because of the opportunity to meet people, but to actually stand up and be a leader. Like all of that is absolutely transferable. So 
All right, so we're going to do this then. Talia, we're going to go ahead while you're looking at, and I'm wondering even if Tabitha or someone through the private chat can help Talia get off mute. I'm going to go ahead and bring on our last group of students. And thank you all so thank much you. for being here. I know we're having a longer show today, but it's because it's so exciting. So Talia, I'll ask maybe Tabitha through the private. Oh, there you go. I think there's a private chat. Uh, there you go. The unmute button and the right on the bottom. Can you see it, Talia? All right. All right. I'm going to pull you out. We'll bring you back on when we see that. And then in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and now bring back Kyla. And by Liam, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to bring back Kyla and also Romarian. Fantastic. All right. So again, Kyla is our friend who is playful, energetic, a freshman and being an entrepreneur. So that's fantastic. And Romarian's a senior in the agricultural finance and economics pathway. He would describe himself as hardworking and ambitious. So please let us know your questions. So I can go first. Um, okay. Well, uh, thank you for giving the opportunity, of course. Mm. So the question I have is, how can like my peers and I, so young adults and teenagers, what can we do that can really push like the message and the cause for and the importance of women in and and women in diversity in general in agriculture? Hmm, that's a that's a really great, good question, and so it's like, what can I do basically, which is. Uh, which is a question that I really love. Um, so um, it's awesome that you're, you guys are starting so young. I'm really impressed <laughs> by this group today. I'll have to say, you know, the things that you guys are studying and your interest and focus. Um, I would say that it's, um, you know, as you get involved and you're already involved, some of you um, have mentioned like being involved in the FFA and I'm sure there's, there's student associations and organizations you're in, is to think about who to maybe invite to the table. Sometimes, I mean, I know within the organization, maybe there are committees or, you know, whether it be programming or whether it be planning, um, maybe there are, there's opportunities to recruit um, more, uh, you know, young women or different kinds of folks from backgrounds into that. Um, and I would say in, in terms of um, going forward, it's to, as you get, get into the industry and maybe have um, internships and eventually maybe run your own companies <laughs> and work mm -hmm. at some of these large ag businesses to, to think about how you can be inclusive of different kinds of voices. And like I said, it doesn't have to just be gender. It could be when I, in diversity and inclusion, I feel like I define it um, not just having more women and the number of women. Mm -hmm. I think it's people who come from different backgrounds. Like when I think of diversity, I think of myself not just as, okay, somebody is a woman and somebody who's in a Chinese American, but somebody who hasn't come from a background of agriculture. And I know that that was a big deal. You know, there would be folks like somebody with no background in agriculture can't be writing about this, can't be in this. And that's what they were thinking. But I, I think it, it I, I feel like I proved them wrong. <laughs> so I, I think it's to, to, um, to be open-minded about about people, maybe even people from the city, you know, uh, who haven't had the chance to grow up on a farm and to see a farm. Um, they, I see a growing number of people who live in big cities um, who have a passion for farming and gardening, and they don't come from backgrounds. Some of them are starting maybe later in life, um, and it doesn't mean that they don't have come from an interesting perspective that they could also share. So I think having that open mindedness and sometimes recruiting people from different um, who speak different languages. Um, you know, on a farm, you also have production staff. A lot of them are Spanish speakers or native Spanish speakers to include them. I mean, they have an, another um, perspective that they could bring to the table as well. So people from different roles, different languages, different backgrounds, maybe different countries. Um, and also it's to travel. Uh, when we can get back to traveling, <laughs> I feel like it's to um, see different um, countries and to see how they do agriculture as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. And Kyla? Uh, I'm really happy to be here. I'm really happy that I have the opportunity to be here. And my question for you is, what are some attributes of agriculture that you feel as though some people don't pay attention to? 
I missed a little bit of that. Um, do you mind repeating repeating that one more time? What are some attributes of agriculture that you feel as though some people don't pay attention to? What are some attributes of agriculture? Deanna, you might have to help a little bit. The sure. mic Kyla, are you thinking like just things that go into the field of agriculture that people just don't realize are part of the business? Yeah. Okay. So actually, which makes a lot of a lot of sense. You know, you were talking, Amy, of you know turning the fruit over and seeing where it came from. So it seems like there's just from start to finish. What are some of the different jobs or opportunities? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking even Kyla wanting to be an entrepreneur. You know, th there was some of the women in your book where everything from soil testing to, you know, just really minute things that you didn't realize were part of agriculture. Yeah, it is a whole process. And I, I said this before, but agriculture is definitely not just tractors and overalls, although there's still an image out there of, of that it just is tractors and overalls. So it's a whole process. And I'm so excited that you're interested in entrepreneurship because there's a lot of opportunities now for a young person with the skills and the creativity and innovation to get into that field. Um, a lot of mentorship accelerator programs. So I'm super excited for you, Kyla. Um, I would say that there's areas for uh, everything from um, start to finish, the researchers who are looking at the seeds even, you know, what kind of seeds are we planting in the ground? What kind of seeds are one of the women, Deanna, in the book is um, is the president of Inari, and they're researching seeds that might um, be need less water. And I know that sounds kind of funny, but there are places that um, you know have a real water shortage. So, what are some seeds that might not need as much water? There's the research component of it. There's the science component of it. Um, there is the opportunity to also work in the field and farm operations as well. I mean, farming has always been uh, used a lot of different kind of technology and innovation. Like the John Deere tractors now almost drive themselves <laughs> by GPS. So if you're interested in, in farm operations, there's not a lot of women in that area as well, like mechanics and equipment and so forth. I would say there's a lot of chances also in marketing and in publicity and in storytelling. We need more people who can tell good stories about agriculture, um, which is something that I'm looking to develop. Um, a lot of chances to start, like I said, an ag and quote unquote ag tech company now also. So um, if you're interested in starting up your own business, I would say, um, that there's a there's good resources out there, Kyla, for young women, especially in that area. You know, not only resources, there's a lot of money out there for and this for everyone. There's a lot of money out there for young people driving innovation. A couple of weeks ago, I had a guest on the show. Her name's Wendy Swart, and she works with the Build Labs at Boston University. And what I found out is on college campuses across the country, they have innovation labs. There's competitions for uh who was it liam who was in the the education decathlon it's it's like decathlons but for innovative entrepreneurs and people are are you there's a lot of money out there because a lot of big companies know that unless they get innovation unless they get new ideas they're not going to survive so yeah, i would put that sparked, yeah you just sparked something i forgot to yeah, say you're absolutely sure. right one of the women in the book is uh, ellie sims with the b Corps. she started her project as a like i think as a sophomore in college and she doesn't come from a background of pollinators <laughs> at all or in farming and it was an it was a need that she saw and she launched this uh, through like if there was a competition i think it was um you know university of um indiana and she that's you know okay. that's how she started her company so absolutely there's money there's resources yeah fantastic and we invite you to follow up with either of us if we can connect you happy to connect you with you know what i know about that or with amy afterwards well, this was just absolutely wonderful i wanted to bring everyone back just to say thank you everyone for being here if there's any other last messages, Amy, that you would like to share or any last comments that any of the, the students have. So again, Amy Wu, our guest today, is she started, I'm going to say she started as an investigative journalist, although I know she still does that. She published her book, which just came out, From Farms to Incubators. But there's also a documentary. The website is From Farms to Incubators. And now she's like, 
50 women changing the world. I mean, really just a driver in women in ag tech. So really exciting. And our students today are from the Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences, who are all people who are hoping to go into the agriculture field. So really cool to be able to bring everyone uh, together. Is there anything, any, any final things that Amy, that you wanna share or anything, one of the students where you're like, I have to ask this, please don't go. So I'm like super impressed with all these questions, and I want to say that I'm really excited um, to see so to see you all, to see that there's a next generation of young people who are so passionate about food and and farming and, and ag tech and agriculture. Just the, within the food system, there's so much opportunity. Um, I think if you've got a passion for changing the world for the better, maybe through the technology or solving big problems with impact, like it's just it's just really inspiring for me to see this actually. So. Um, I hope that you guys continue your hard work and your good work and continue to follow your own your own passions because I think eventually it'll bring you um, it'll bring you to where you want to be. And um, I would say that, uh, yeah, I'm just I'm super excited. I hope to have a chance to visit your school sometime and see your farm um, and some really intelligent questions today. So thank you, Deanna, for, for, for doing this and for, for bringing on the young people today as well. Absolutely. My pleasure. I'm going to go ahead and end our live broadcast. If you don't leave, we'll be backstage for another minute if anybody wants to say goodbye to Amy. Um, thank you all so much for being here on Intercultural Spark. Next week, uh, we have our guest, uh, Scarlett. Uh, Oh my gosh. See, that's what happens when you go away on vacation the day before your show. We have an amazing, uh, the, the Jesse Lewis Choose Love Foundation. So Scarlett Lewis, who um, is all about, she has a worldwide curriculum on emotional intelligence and that her spark unfortunately, was, was when her son was actually uh, one of the children who was shot at the, uh, uh, at the in Connecticut, in the Newtown, Connecticut shooting. And from there, she has created a curriculum that now is changing the world. So Scarlett will be joining us next Thursday. Uh, thank you all so much for being here on Intercultural Spark, and we will see you next week.